Welcome back, and if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. So this video is going to be a chronicle of my travels in Ukraine to the Great Patriotic War Museum and the Motherland Monument and the offshoot little tank museum thing that I found that was fairly close to the museum. So what I'm doing now is I'm just walking along the outside and the, the courtyard basically of the museum, taking some footage of the uh, Soviet era statuesque looking dudes. And it was really, really, really neat looking. Some of the, the craftsmanship that went into into how it was built was it was I had to take a video of it and walk all the way around it so you guys could see it. I imagine in the the spring and summertime that this is all filled in with water and it probably looks pretty pretty amazing when it's all fully done up and all filled in. But you can see all the guys they have different grenades and, and guns and I like the the chunky art style that they have. Kind of reminds me of uh, some fonts I've seen that are done in, in Soviet era style. Very contrast and very different from anything I've saw in the West. So along here, this branched out into the middle a bit, and then there was a there's the Motherman Monument off to the left a little bit. I'll pan up and you can see that really really striking, beautiful monument. And I've seen the, the Statue of Liberty, and <laughs> honestly, this thing was pretty impressive. It was a bit more impressive than the Statue of Liberty to me. I like it because it's all chromy looking. It looks really neat. Now, I spent about three months uninterrupted uh, time in Ukraine, traveling to about five different cities being between Odessa, Kherson, Kiev, Poltava, and Kharkiv, and ended up meeting a girl in Kharkiv, and I'm going to be going back in August to spend, I don't know how many months with her, so if things go well, <laughs> I don't even know when I'll be back, I'll have to transfer my World of Tanks account to the European server. So now I'm just walking around in the, the main square, and off to the left there's a bunch of placards that show a bunch of the names of uh, in Ukraine of the cities that fought in the Great Patriotic War, which is what they call World War II. I think the Russians use the same terminology. And out front of the museum, they have these three tanks. There are two T-64s and a T-62 in the middle. And this is the first time I'd really been up close to, to one of these vehicles. The only ever Soviet tank I'd ever seen was in Calgary, and it was a T-72, which is dramatically different from all three of these tanks. So. I ended up having to do a bit of research on trying to figure out what's the difference between a T-62 and a T-64 and a T-54 and all this different stuff. And these, this one on the on the right was the green one, and it had a bunch of ERA armor bricks all over it. So this one had seen action at some point in a more modern type warfare. And the, the T-64s are still being built in Ukraine in the, the Kharkiv tank factory at Malashev. And... Uh, I think the new one's called the Bulat. So you can see the T-62 there. This was another T-64 done up in Ukraine National Pride colors, the, the blue and yellow. And you can see all over Kiev and uh, other parts of Ukraine where uh, they really, really, really are a lot more patriotic considering now that the situation between what's going on between the, the Russians and the Ukrainians. So just panning left and right. You can see that the size of these tanks is they're just dramatically smaller than anything in the West. Like I've been right beside Challenger 1s, Challenger 2s, Abrams tanks and Leopards and these are really, really small. And I think some of the the heights of the, the tankers in the Soviet Union, I don't think anyone taller than 5.3 or 5.4 were allowed in these vehicles. You just wouldn't fit. And I really don't think I would fit. I'm six feet tall. And walking around these things, I was kind of surprised how small they were, but they were so cool looking. And over in another area, there's another T-62, 
and it has a, a bunch of the the lights on the front and I'm assuming those were for for night vision and uh, some tracking type type stuff but some of the armor bricks were pulled off the the turret on this one really neat looking vehicles though and what I did end up learning is that the the T64 uh, pretty much it was an like a a parallel branch that was developed alongside the the T72 like the T72 is kind of like the the cheaper crappier version uh, that they would export and then they kept the T64s and the T80s and the T84s for themselves they didn't uh, want to export those or have that technology be leaked out to the west and uh, they kept the an alternative line they developed two in parallel the the T72s and the T90s the T90 branched off from the T72 line and from the T64 it branched to the T80 and the T80 had lots more advancements it was a better quality tank I think it had better ceramic armor it ran in a, a turbine engine instead of a, a diesel engine which had its <laughs> strengths and its drawbacks it was fast but it broke down a lot more and I think it sucked in problems with dust and things like that and similar with the Abrams had problems with in Iraq so just walking around these vehicles, I spent a lot of time around these, just getting up close to them and checking them out, and and uh, I didn't necessarily crawl around on them like the, you saw some of the little kids in the last video, but size-wise, the T62 and the T64 were very similar in size. You can see in the back that's where the the extra fuel drums would be, and the the road wheels on the T62 are quite a bit bigger like the t54 uh, the, the t64 the, the road wheels got a fair bit smaller you can see walking up or you can see in the back there that they were pretty different in size and the sloping on the 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 upper plate on the t62 wasn't as much as the t64 at least from my I'm just eyeballing it but you can see it's raked a lot a lot further and probably a little bit longer on the t64 My girlfriend actually snapped off a picture of one of the, the ones that was being transported through the middle of Kharkiv and she sent it to me. And it was on a, a cargo truck and they were driving it through the middle of town. And she was like, she she knows I love tanks and I have a YouTube channel. So she, she took a picture and sent it to me and I'll post it up on, uh, on Instagram. I have an Instagram account where I'm posting all my pictures and stuff that'll be half of my new uh, Ukrainian lifestyle. Uh, those will all be going up on Instagram and various stuff on, on Pinterest and all the other stuff you'll see in the links at the end of the video. I've branched everything out into every social network basically except for Facebook. I've got a boycott of Facebook because of political stuff I don't agree with their, their company. So I'm trying not to support them. I know Instagram is an offshoot <laughs> of Facebook, unfortunately, but I like that platform so much because I'm so visual that I, I can't really ignore it. But I hate Facebook. I hate everything it stands for, and I, I can't stand uh, how they block things out of your feeds that, you, that they don't agree with politically uh, so your friends can't see them. And you basically have to pay to, to get your friends to see the things that you want to post on your feed. So you're basically being censored by Facebook. So I don't I don't agree with that, and I I think that's crap. So that's why you'll never. I deleted my Facebook account for Captain Canada, and it won't be coming back up unless there's some massive change. But I don't see that happening from Zuckerberg. So now we're hopping over to the the little tank area, but they've jammed in a whole crap ton. There's a little T27 tankette, and Honestly, I'm not even sure what this thing is. <laughs> it was really small. I don't even know how a human, a big human could fit in there. I think little kids could fit in it. And there's a little armored car there. And the the very first big tank that you probably will recognize is the T-3485. These were scattered all around Ukraine. Uh, there were tank monuments in Kherson that I found that were a T-3485. This was an IS tank with a 100 millimeter gun. Then we have the ISU-152, 
and uh, the barrel and the gun on this thing were huge. It was pretty amazing. And pretty sure the next one to my right was uh, an SU-100 or an SU-122. I got to see the barrel. I'm pretty sure it was an SU-100. I could be wrong. I know there was an SU-85 more back around the corner. And this is the first time I'd ever seen an IS-3 in real life uh, with the, the Shuka Pike nose in the front. And it was it was pretty neat to see. And beside that, there's another T-64. Back in the back there, there was an armored train with T-10 turrets on it. There's a T-55 and the IS-2. And honestly, the IS-2 was the, probably the most imposing vehicle that I, I ended up seeing there. It was really, really cool. That and the T-10 were really neat. I think that was a, a Su-122 right there. A short barreled one. There's a bigger one there. I'm not, <laughs> my preview window was blurry, so I can't read the names of these things. I tried to get close enough so you guys could see what exactly they were. This was an IS with a different hull uh, from the one to the left. And I think this was the SU-85 or the SU-100. Yeah, that was the SU-100, I think. I can read it a little bit. And I'm filming all this on my Galaxy 6. It has optical image stabilization, so it wasn't too jumpy walking around. I'm going to try and get a better camera for this sort of thing, but I actually felt like it did an, an okay job. I tried not to pan too fast. And then walking this way, there was just an assortment of trucks and amphibious vehicles of all different sorts. I like all the, the white wall tires they painted on them. Interestingly, there was a lot of Turks and Arabs showing up um, in different parts of the city. They like to come in in the spring and the summer, and they're I think they have a, an agreement where they they're allowed to go back and forth. So you'll <laughs> go to Ukraine, you'll end up seeing quite a, a lot of Turks actually. So back in the corner here, we ended up seeing uh, it was IS twos with 122 millimeter guns, and in the it, in the video it's one thing, but being up close to them. It was they were really imposing and uh, yeah for the, definitely the most impressive tanks that I ended up running into and that was an intercontinental ballistic missile system some fighter jets and then there's a bigger missile system there and then there was a bunch of anti-tank guns slash artillery pieces there and then back from there you can see that the the motherland monuments in the back but I was, I'm going to fixate a little bit <laughs> on these tanks because this is the first time in this video was the first time I'd ever seen an IS-2 in real life. And you can see in the, the, the lower plate, they have the tank tracks plastered on them. And on the IS-3 here, the, the tank tracks plastered on the, the IS-3 on the nose. And I, I did find it weird that I could rec recognize the, the IS-8 slash T-10 <laughs> turrets on this armored train thing in the back. And we're looking at another tank destroyer. Again, it has the, the tank treads for extra armor protection. Again, on the lower plate, the tank treads. That ISU-152 was really, really cool looking. Or the Su-152. Now that I can read Cyrillic and I, I know five or six hundred Russian words, it's uh, it's not impossible to, to move around in Ukraine, but you're not going to find super amount of people that speak English. So <laughs> at certain points, it was a bit of a struggle. So the tank you're looking at now is a T-54. And there was quite a lot of kids and, and people around in in around these areas. This was a whole nother offshoot area that was by the, the museum. And uh, the next tank of the line here was a T-55. You can see it's got a bunch of thermal sighting stuff on it, I think. And then the last one in the line was uh, another T-64. All painted up. Looked pretty new. And I'm assuming that thing in the back I don't know, maybe it was some kind of exhaust system. I'm not sure what that was. And then back in the corner here, there was a, a missile truck, some anti-aircraft guns, uh, anti-tank guns. This anti-aircraft gun thing was really, really neat looking. I wouldn't want to run into that as a, even an infantry soldier. 
And then there was a hind. I've never seen one of these before. The last time I saw one of those was in that god awful Rambo movie, <laughs> Rambo Three, where he's uh, he's teamed up with Al Qaeda and the, the the CIA fighting the the evil Soviet Union uh, to liberate the <laughs> the the Muslims, <laughs> uh, the, some capitalist help. I thought that was pretty hilarious. Seeing the hind D was really really neat. So I'm just going to walk back past the, the T-64 and the T-55 again. And I have a, a brand new appreciation for these vehicles and how neat they are and some of the engineering that went into them. Because from my perspective, the first time I ever saw these was like when the, the Americans had invaded Iraq and they were, were fighting them and with the, the Abrams tanks and stuff. And you got to remember how old these vehicles were compared to the Abrams and... I mean, yeah, they, they did lose and stuff, but there's such a massive age gap between the the manufacturing times. And then, yeah, we uh, back up and around this corner, there was, I found this. It was a T-10M. This was the last heavy tank that was made in serial production by the Soviet Union. And it was really, really cool. The pike nose on it. And yeah, it looks exactly like the, the same model you'll see in World of Tanks. See all the road wheels, and uh, yeah, it was it was really neat. This combined with the the T62 and the T64s were some of the neatest vehicles that I ended up seeing here. Curiously enough, I didn't actually see any T72s or T90s. Those must have just stayed in Russia. The Malyshev plant, I think, only made T64s and T80s and T84 uh, op lots. So, I'm gonna have one more video of the the T10 after this. I shot this on two separate days. I came back because you'll see the, the weather change and the lighting change. One day was a little bit sunnier, and this was it was a little bit more overcast. So you can see the, the upper plate, the lower plate. Now, I love the barrel on this thing. The, the barrel had uh, this cool ringing on the end. And another infrared light, I think that was. And also they had these uh, little armored fighting vehicles. Some of these you'll end up probably recognizing from some of the, the lower tier stuff in Armored Warfare if you end up playing that game, which is, has since seen its developer change from Obsidian Interactive, who had flown me down for the, the initial press beta. Um, but now it's being taken over, completely developments being taken over by my.com so it'll be interesting i haven't had a chance to play that yet uh with the the new all the new stuff that's rolled in and the the, the 2.0 balance changes now this is another icbm <laughs> this was really impressive to see up close too. some of the stuff that was pointed at uh, the americans in canada in the cold war <laughs> and yeah these were the these missiles would have been the ones that were flying over to Canada to hit Washington and all the, the big big stuff in the United States. So, yeah. It was always nice to know that the Americans shooting them down. The, all the fallout would have been over Canada. <laughs> I'm not sure if a lot of people would have known that, but yeah. And then this was a... I went back into this little museum. The nice thing about going into these places is they were super cheap to go to. This was like... 50 grievnas, which translated to about two dollars and fifty cents to to go in and take a look at these things and take video and pictures and you know, like i was more than happy that i would have paid three or four or five times as much to be able to just access this place and look at all these things again so i went back here a couple times when i was in kiev because i was getting some dental work done which was also subsequently extremely cheap so i ended up getting a the implant crown for the one of my teeth for about three or four hundred dollars there so like comparatively speaking in canada they were asking twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars for just the same tooth uh from my dentist so dental touristry is also not a bad thing if you're interested in, in going to kiev there's a lot of uh, dentist offices do speak english and that as a was one of the things that went really really smoothly for me this is just me panning back walking through the area looking at all the the tank destroyers the 122s and the 152s yeah they had a lot of Sioux tanks and there's the t55 
And back, back in the back, there's a little T-70. I didn't notice that at the beginning. I was too busy looking at all these other big heavy tanks and the, the main battle tanks and stuff. But yeah, we're just walking through here and being able to see all these tanks that I'd never seen before, especially the, the Soviet ones, that you really learn a lot from, from playing tanks like tank games like, like Battlefield and and World of Tanks and War Thunder and, and Armored Warfare, all these tanks I'd never really seen before until I started playing all those sorts of World War II and more modern type games, but especially World of Tanks for, for some of those vehicles. And I was basically just in heaven walking around back and forth <laughs> between all these things. I spent hours here just looking at these things and then remembering I had to, to take footage of it because I wanted to show everybody where I'd been and what I was doing. So bear with me as I, I walk through a lot of this stuff because I, I wanted to get close-up stuff and a little bit further away footage of some of this stuff so you could see the size contrast between some of the vehicles and how much smaller the T-64's turret was than even the T-55 and the T-54. And after a while, I could it was... You don't really appreciate the the in armored warfare. You don't maybe appreciate the T-54 and the T-55 and the T-64 as much as they, they should be appreciated, um, seeing how they were so important to the Soviet Union and, and the Cold War for, those, those were the big tanks, like, and those are the ones they exported to all their allies. And, and in Bulgaria, they also made the T-80 and the, that sort of stuff. So I don't know, I just, I, I got a brand new kind of appreciation for, for all these vehicles. They were a little more crudely built, but compared to, to their Western equivalents and stuff, but really really just amazing to to be able to see some of this stuff now these are individual walk arounds of the t54 the t55 and the t64 this one being the t50 t54 nope yeah this is the t54 here I'm still maybe not the master of telling the difference between a T-55 and a T-54. There are definitely differences in the, the cupola at the, on the top, but the upper plate, and uh, it, <laughs> if you're just looking at them really quickly, it, it's a little bit hard to tell the differences between them. But you can definitely tell that the, 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 the turrets are different. Especially when I walk around the back, you can see the, the plating is different. And the T-54's turret seems a little bit fatter and wider and not angled quite as much. And here's the T-64. And I'm not, maybe someone can chime in in the, the comments on uh, in YouTube and VidMe. And maybe if you have an idea of what those boxes are on the side of the turret, I'm not too sure. I think they're a little bit big to be ERA bricks. They maybe look like storage or I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe some sort of countermeasure something or other. And then walking around over to the back, stepping up on the sides. I assumed that it would probably be a bad idea to walk around on the grass. And this was the, the other T-62 that was back in the corner. And I got a, quite a, a bit of footage of it because it was kind of by itself. And it was nice because there wasn't as many people around it. So I could walk around it. And I really, really liked the, the look of the T-62. The T-62 was one of the, the neatest vehicles there. That and the, the T-10. And they kept these vehicles in really nice shape. This one does have the, the gasoline drum on the back. And at one point here, I ended up getting a, a spam call <laughs> on my telephone from Kiev Star, which was my cell phone provider. And then the, the video shut off right about there <laughs> because it stopped video recording. And uh, yeah, I was a little bit perturbed about that. So. I ended up taking about three or four videos of this vehicle just because it looked so cool. And anyone who plays World of Tanks will recognize this as one of the, the, the tier 10 vehicles that you can get after you get to the T-54. You can get the T-55, but you have to do one of those special missions, which are all a huge pain in the butt to do. I really don't. <laughs> I'm still on the, the T-28 prototype um, concept thing. I'm still on those missions. I haven't really made it a priority to, to get through them. But now that I've seen a T-55 in real life, I'd really like to get it because the T-54 and the T-55 and the T-62 tanks that I ended up running into 
in Ukraine here. You know, like I just I, I appreciate them more now that I've seen them and been around them and and seen the the culture and the country that can help create them. Because in the Bovington Tank Museum, they have a T-55, they have a T-54, but I don't think they had some of these ones like the the, the T-64. They definitely didn't have a T-10 for what I remember. But I think uh, once I'm in Kharkiv, it's right on the Russian border, and I am going <laughs> to I'm going to make my girlfriend take me to into Russia. Uh, it's about a seven-step program for for Canadians because. Canada has been so hostile to Russia for the past, what, decade, maybe two decades, uh, between Harper and uh, our substitute teacher, prime minister that we currently have. He, it's a bit, it's a bit hard for Canadians to get into Russia, but I really want to go to the, to, to the Kubinka Tank Museum because they have like the, the mouse, they have the IS-7, I think. They have a whole bunch of stuff that i I know I could get in there. I just have to do all the paperwork to do it. And I think they have the uh, T-62, the Object 430, I think is there. I could be wrong. Someone can chime in on the comments on all the stuff that I'm wrong about. <laughs> Feel free to correct me. But yeah, being in that region will allow me to go to the, the French tank museums, the German tank museum. I can go to Bovington a lot easier and quicker. Because right now in Vancouver, it's, it's, it takes about 17 to 18 hours for me to fly all the way over there. And it's really, really time consuming. But if I'm going to be in Ukraine in August, so I'll be able to to have access to all these places. And I'll be putting it all up on my, my YouTube and VidMe channels possibly even Vimeo, maybe some other channels as well. I'm really trying to branch out from YouTube because it's getting like Facebook and it's draconian. Um, just trying to control speech, trying to control what you hear, demonetizing certain people. I want to try and get away from platforms that are doing that kind of active censorship. And that, that was an armored, that was a, a rocket truck. And this was another armored fighting vehicle that uh, had like a, a mini gun and some side ports for getting in and out and really huge wheels. I'd never seen one of these before in real life either. In Canada, we have a Lav 3 that has a, a big gun. It's kind of the the most similar thing that Canada has to this thing. It's got eight road wheels as well. I've seen one of those and climbed around on that. These two vehicles were recovered vehicles um, that were never manufactured in Ukraine and can only have come from Russia. So it kind of proves that the Russians were providing the the breakaway states of Donbass and Lugansk with with weaponry, unfortunately. Like, I don't hate Russians, but there's definitely stuff that's going on in the border where the Russians are supporting those breakaway, wannabe breakaway states. I, I don't really have a foot in it, but those were definitely uh, things I... I definitely tried to talk about some of it with uh, the locals. Oh, and this was shot in, in Kharkiv. This is where I'll be staying. This was a, was a Type 4 World War I tank. I don't know how they got their paws on it. <laughs> but uh, it was really, really neat. It was it was cool being able to see uh, one of the first tanks that was actively used in World War One, Being able to walk around that. And now we're going to jump into a bit of footage of stuff that was actually in the, the, the History Museum of the Great Patriarch War. This was an SS motorcycle. You can see the lightning bolts and the helmet there. This was used by the the basically like this secret Nazi police that would go around and this is who you would form <laughs> inform on people to to get them murdered and it was a really great museum again really cheap to go into tons of photographs tons of of pictures uh, lots of vehicles objects uh, kit that the soldiers had and all the uniforms and like I've been to a Canadian museums, I've been to American museums, but some of the stuff that was here was stuff that I don't think you would see anywhere else. I'm sure that Russia has some great museums, but this stuff is really cool. And this this room pretty much made me cry. Like I was really actively trying hard not to cry. This is like the Hall of Memories basically was what I would call it because it was just, it was, 
thousands and thousands of pictures of all the soldiers that had given up their life to, to fight for the Soviet Union and uh, for their families and their brothers and their sisters and their parents and their, their kids. Yeah, it was really tough to see. It was tough to walk into that room. You can see all the, the Soviet Union, Union or uh, hammer and sickle and everything. They had lots of confiscated German stuff too. I'll be making a separate video of all the pictures I took of in here. I couldn't take as much video because there was quite a lot of people at certain points and I didn't want to, to be hopping around people all the time, but I'm going to wrap the video up here. So if you want to see the, the, some of the, the pictures and things that are going on, check out the Instagram. I'm also dumping stuff on Tumblr. It's on everything I post to all those platforms is going on Twitter and Pinterest and just feel free to, to check it all out. And I just want to thank everyone for, for tuning in and supporting me. And I did lose a bunch of subscribers of people that did decide to, to leave me, but uh, I'm going to be putting up videos every day or every other day for the foreseeable future until August. Then I'll be taking a break for about a week and a half where we find a place and I'll be setting up there. So there'll be a little bit of a lull between here and there, but other than that, uh, I'm back and I just want to thank everyone for who did stick with me. I still have like 14,700 of my subscribers and I'm hoping to build the channel back up and, and build it into the, the thing I want it to be because I really enjoy doing this and I want to make this a, one of my part-time jobs because I now have a whole bunch of part-time things that I'm doing as my career because I found that uh, you got to really diversify <laughs> in this new world that we live in. So I just want to thank everyone for keeping keeping the hope alive and, and you know, I, I did this video for you guys so you can see where I've been and what I've done and where I'm going because I really, I think my future might actually be there because I, I'm falling in love with this girl. So Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you soon.